Good morning. Thank you for joining with me today. My name is Karen. We are looking in the book of First Peter, and we're in chapter 2 this week. And I want to begin in verse 7, but let's talk about what we discussed last week. God says that you are living stones. I am building you into a living temple. Jesus is our cornerstone. That's where the plumb line, everything meets at him, on him. And it talked about how we are God's holy priests who offer the spiritual sacrifices that please him because of Jesus Christ. But today I want to read verses 7 through 10. So if you follow along, it says, Yes, he is very precious to you who believe in Jesus, right? But for those who reject him, the stone that was rejected by the builders has now become the cornerstone. The scriptures also say he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that will make them fall. They stumble because they do not listen to God's word or obey it. And so they meet the fate that has been planned for them. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a kingdom of priests, God's holy nation, he, his very own possession. This is so you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Verse 10. Once you were not a people, now you are the people of God. Once you received none of God's mercy, now you have received his mercy. When someone rejects what Jesus has done for them. We're basically saying my good works are going to save me. Nothing bad is going to happen to me. But when we reject Christ, we are saying to God that his sacrifice is not good enough for us. And thus, when we want to do it our way, he becomes that stumbling block. And how do they stumble? We have each stumbled before we have accepted Christ. We have each stumbled. We do not listen to God's word and we do not obey it. God says, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, confess your sins to me. I am faithful and just to forgive you of all those sins. And the punishment that we would receive, God, Jesus himself took upon himself. And thus, when we reject that, we're saying, your sacrifice was not good enough for me. So what happens is they meet the fate that has been planned for them. God does not desire that anyone should perish but that everyone would come to a relationship with him, that they would live with him in heaven. But when we reject the one thing that could save us here, we're basically sealing our fate. But to those who have received Christ, we are not like that. He says, you are a chosen people. You are a kingdom of priests, God's holy nation, his very own possession. We become gods and he gives us and bestows upon us his blessings, his mercy, his forgiveness of every sin, past, present, and future. And he says, you are now mine. And why does he give this to us? So that you can show others the goodness of God. He wants his life in me to bless you. As someone who lived their life in front of me, blessed me by revealing who God is. We each want to show that God is good. There is not any sin that is too deep or too great that God cannot forgive. So we are to be that living example, a testimony of who God is. For he called us out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Doesn't that want to make you want to shout it tell somebody i'm no longer in darkness i'm no longer bound to that sin i'm not a slave to it i've been set free that is what we are to do once we were not a people but now we are his people once we did not know what god's mercy was but now we have received it that's the good news anyone and everyone can See the goodness of God, be a people called out, and to have God's mercy shown upon us. Next week, we're going to pick up in verse 11, so tune in, and I pray that this blesses you and encourages you. I pray that we will live in a reverential fear of God of saying, God, I don't want to live disobediently to you. 
I want everything that you have for me. So I give you my life. I see you next week. And I know and let just know that you are loved, that we pray for you. God bless you.